Elections were called just a few short days ago in Alberta, and already the campaign trail is heating up. We were able to sit down with PC leader Allison Redford while she visited the economic heartbeat of the province, Fort McMurray. Traditionally, the Alberta government follows um, the level of census which you guys provide, and that usually places us at about 68,000 people here in Fort McMurray. Yeah. The municipal government follows a census that places us at around 120,000 people. Yeah. If the PCs are re-elected, which system are they going to be following, and how do you think would best support the region? And what to me is unique about Fort McMurray, we know, is that with the growth pressures, looking to traditional census numbers aren't actually giving people in this community the services that they need. I remember when I first became Justice Minister, we talked about how a number of the issues that, that we faced with respect to things like the courthouse were based on what at the time we sort of called the shadow population, right? It's not only people that are living and residing in the community, but it's people that are using services in the community, needing to access government services. And one of the things that I want to make sure is that we're looking to what our outcomes need to be. And our outcomes are services to Albertans, no matter where they happen to be. So we've introduced legislation called results-based budgeting legislation where every year over a three-year cycle we're going to go back to government programs and say are these programs in communities across the province accomplishing what we need them to accomplish so we've introduced legislation called results-based budgeting legislation where every year over a three-year cycle we're going to go back to government programs and say are these programs in communities across the province accomplishing what we need them to accomplish and if they're not then we have to reprofile the budgeting to make sure that albertans are getting the services fantastic now one of the biggest issues up here in fort mcmurray i'm not sure if you had a chance to drive in today is highway 63. Yeah. i know the twinning has been taking its time yeah. how can we expedite this to be a faster process well, one of the things we've really put some resources into lately is trying to deal with the caribou management issue because we that's sort of something that the federal government is very engaged with mm -hmm. uh, wants to make sure that we're dealing with environmentally sustainability construct con environmentally sustainable construction We'll be able to twin another 35 kilometers by the middle of the summer. Uh, I think that after that, we're going to be able to see much more base work done. It is a priority. It has to be a priority. And I want to say that, you know, I've been Premier for six months, and it was important for me to make sure that we could work effectively with local decision makers as soon as I became Premier. So we've been able to move ahead with things like the Transportation Committee that have allowed for local council to put bus routes in up to, up to projects and to be able to provide enough flexibility to local decision makers that we're able to actually start to deliver on some things that we've talked about for far too long. And it's frustrated me that we've done that. And Highway 63 is one of those. And we're going to continue our commitment to it at an accelerated pace. If we can get through some of the environmental issues and, and continue to build through some of the difficult uh, um, weather circumstances, mm -hmm. we can get this done. And we will get this done faster than we have so far. Now, we used to only have one riding in this area. And now we've been split into two. Some of those people we've been speaking to the community thinks it's a little too confusing. And they're worried that it may affect how they're going to be voting. So yeah. how do you feel about it and now having two ridings here? Well, I think it's wonderful to have two ridings because it's going to mean stronger representation. You'll have two MLAs, and I think they should be uh, Mike Allen and Don Scott because they're strong community advocates who live in the community. Uh, the reason there are two constituencies, of course, is population mm -hmm. growth. The thing that's been confusing, and I know it is, is the map. And, and that is, you know, and I've, you know, we've, we've had our chuckle about the map, no doubt. Um, but, but the problem that, that we face is that government didn't actually create the constituencies. We had an independent electoral commission made up of three independent experts, I think it was three people, mm -hmm. who drew the map. And so they drew the map in the way that they thought made sense for the constituency. Uh, and, and it is confusing for people. And we have other constituencies in, in other parts of the province that also will have new boundaries. I think people will get used to it. We'll certainly make sure that all of the information that we can put out will be available. I guess I'd like people to think about the fact that it's a good thing that we have two constituencies <laughs> now because it speaks to how important Fort McMurray is coming, mm -hmm. uh, coming to be in the province. Um, and it is unfortunate with respect to those boundaries, but as I said, it's not something that, that we as a government were able to impact. That was an independent commission that did that work. We often have the lowest voter turnout in all of Alberta. Yeah. Any advice on how we can increase those numbers locally? 
Well, I think the best thing we can do, and it's what I'm going to do on a provincial level, is talk about the issues that matter to Albertans. You know, mm -hmm. education matters, healthcare matters. Here it is Highway 63 and its infrastructure. And when we think about that and we talk about the issues that Albertans want us to be talking about so that they can listen to what our plans are and they can know that we're continuing to provide services, that we're not increasing taxes, and that we're ensuring that infrastructure is in place, that's going to give people something a reason to vote, a reason to vote and a reason to be excited about the future. And so I would say, and I think they're doing it already, to be really solid with respect to the, their views and their ideas and their thoughts on what community growth looks like mm -hmm. and make sure that community uh, volunteers and community spokespeople are connecting with them on those issues because that's what's going to interest people and get them out to vote. Okay, so our last question, we had a panel and we let everyone put forward their vote and this one got the most hits. So there's 18 people locally that wanted this one. How do the PCs plan on supporting smaller growing communities where the need is versus larger communities that just want? Well, and that's, that's the point that we talked about at the beginning, mm -hmm. is that we're not going to be able to build our communities across this province only by looking to where the largest populations are. Uh, we need to look at what the growth challenges are for communities and be responsive to those needs. I will say that we're committed to continuing with the Municipal Sustainability Initiative, which is very important in terms of communities having the ability to make infrastructure decisions. Uh, Fort McMurray is unique in that there's a lot of other infrastructure money that's coming in. Mm -hmm. But I will say, and I'll be a little political here, that there are other political parties that are looking to cut infrastructure, they're looking to cut services, and that's not going to allow communities to forget just be sustainable, but to grow. And we've got to be able to, to be proud of the fact that in Alberta, we have communities across this province that aren't one of the two large urban centers, and it's one of the things that's unique, I think, for us in Canada. We've got to continue to support those communities, and we will. Thank you. Well, thanks so much for joining Thank us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks.